You're listening to a portion of the Radio Free Cybertron interview with Joe Ibe, a.k.a. the Metal Hawk Guy. I am Brian Kilby. With me I have J.D. Church, XV, and John DeLuna. The Metal Hawk Guy is a world-renowned cosplayer famous for his Transformers costumes, including Metal Hawk and Optimus Prime. For the entire interview, links and more, check us out at tfradio.net, Radio Free Cybertron, the original Transformers Internet radio show, and one of the world's first podcasts online since 1999. Uh, I'm 42 years old. 43 is coming up very soon. And I've been costuming quite literally since I was uh, like two years old. I got photographs of me just putting stuff together uh, in the photo album. And I really got into Transformers when it first came out, uh, mainly because I liked that they put profiles on them. Yeah, and, you know, everyone's going, well, don't you like GoBots? No, because all you have, Leader One, Heroic Robot. Well, what does that tell me about them? Nothing, really. I've been uh, just, you know, got to really into making costumes not too long after high school. Then just uh, kind of went on from there. You know, I do a lot of other costumes uh, and a lot of other things, but, you know, Transformers uh, is has been basically my relative niche so far. I've done, like, well, going in order of what I've done, I've done like I've done Rekgar. Don't have any pictures of him, unfortunately. And it was pretty good. I could I, I could actually halfway transform in him. I just couldn't get my legs to bend forward. Yeah, and then uh, I did uh, Metal Hawk from Japan. Yeah, well, either it was either Metal Hawk or Optimus Prime. I can't remember which one I did uh, either one of. Uh, the first, you know. But, uh, yeah, I took uh, Rekgar and Optimus Prime down to uh, Comic-Con, and I walked around the uh, dealer's room as Metalhawk, and I did the masquerade as Optimus Prime with the Matrix in the chest. It has the Matrix in the chest? Yeah, I opened the chest up and uh, revealed the Matrix. I don't think we've seen any pictures of I that. I never saw a picture of that. Is that on your website or on your YouTube channel? Yeah, it should be on the YouTube channel. Yeah, oh, yeah I did do... Um, yeah, I did Optimus Prime before Metal Hawk because I remember I went to Fanime and uh, went into the Masquerade uh, with that, and that was like a year or two before I went to Comic Con. So, um, and I probably would have won a, a prize for that, but when I walked out on stage, everybody just—I I was just so surprised that everybody was, gave me a standing ovation for doing that. I'm going, wow, really? You know, uh, I just walked out there and going, I was just totally stunned and forgot what I was going to do. Because I had a blaster that uh, I kind of mocked up that looked almost like the to- like the, from the anima- animation series and the uh, and the toy. So uh, basically, uh, I was going to you know do some like uh, gun spinning with it, and it, I just was like, wow, really? <laughs> and then I just walked out because I was so surprised and. Backstage, three people were going, oh, Optimus Prime. Oh, i got to get a picture. i got to get a picture. <clears throat> oh, hey, Joe. This is John. Um, yeah. Good to talk to you. I, I got, I've got a couple quick questions. Um, mm-hmm. Over the years, like, what, what's, the, what's the one costume that's your favorite, your, like, your personal favorite? And do you, do you keep these? Like, uh, do you store these and archive these uh, costumes? Or are you always, you know, kind of tweaking them and messing with them? Do you ever, well, like, the, you know, retire yeah. them? Well, to answer the second one first, um, no, I don't archive them uh, because I sweat in them a lot, and then after a while, they uh, just it's cardboard and duct tape, and the cardboard, my sweat, even with the, the padding I put through them, just um, seeps right through. Um, you know, and after a year or two, um, I kind of, I kind of have to store them out in the, like a shed or the garage or something like that, and and it's not, it's kind of humid here, so it just kind of really disintegrates everything after a time. Plus, after wearing them for a bit, I gotta kind of re- remake some parts of them, uh, just to, you know. But uh, my favorite one, I'd have to say, it was Optimus Prime because it was easier to put on. But the second one would have to be um, Star Saber. I don't know that I saw the Star Saber or that I've seen the Star Saber. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, well, it's not it's not the uh, full one. It's just the 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 jet one. It's not the combined form. It's, a, it's Star Saber, not Victory Saber. Right. It, well, Star Saber, uh, you know, it, uh, according from what I've read in the profiles, it's a uh, Saber, which is the uh, jet, and then Star Saber is the jet and V jet combined. But uh, I did the small jet Brain Master, and that turned out good. Uh, but it didn't turn out great until I figured out, oh, I'm not wearing the right shirt underneath this thing to make it look like it's um, correct. But I had the nose cone mounted on the shoulder, and I had the fuselage back there with the wings, and I'm going to try and remake it in, like, uh, Wonderflex sometime soon. Hi, Joe. This is XV. Um, yeah. Now, to get a little bit off the Transformers costumes for just a moment, uh, right. I noticed that you made – uh, costumes for other series that I assume you're a fan of, uh, including right. Doctor Who. I I was just wondering, mm -hmm. uh, what led you to make a TARDIS costume? Basically, um, I, w I wrote a short story where the Doctor materializes in the midst of the, the battle between the Autobots and Decepticons in an oil field, and the Decepticons, at, in a retreat, uh, sense the power inside the TARDIS and take it with them, and so Basically, the only thing the Doctor has to do is uh, join with the Autobots to try and get it back. And after one failed attempt, um, he d he thought th this was with the Colin Baker character. And he was – I put it in the story between where he's uh, working on the chameleon circuit. And so uh, basically he has Optimus Prime kind of imbue it a bit with the uh, – imbue the chameleon circuit a bit with the Transformer uh, life. And then he has his companion go inside, insert it in, and then he becomes – the doctor becomes the head of the TARDIS in a robot form. And I did this this way because in the BBC's writer's guide, I've been told that the TARDIS cannot become alive for any uh, reason whatsoever. So that's why I did that. Okay, so it, it's a fan character based on the TARDIS basically. Right. Well, Doctor Who series, yeah. I yeah. don't know anything about Doctor Who myself, so I'm just sort of scratching okay. my head here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I also showed it to the actor uh, when he came over for a convention one time, and he kind of liked the idea. Say someone's wanting to start to get into this. How do you do it? How do you make some of these costumes? Um, well, basically, figure out which character you want to do. And then kind of figure out how much you want to see out the out the helmet and whatever, because you know visors and stuff like that. The way I start is I start with the legs and kind of work up. Uh, basically, you want to you know make sure what the way I do is with cardboard. You you want to get for the especially for the legs. You want to get the most sturdiest cardboard you can. Um, basically, like vegetable boxes, wine boxes are the best. And if you want to really get something that's extra durable, you can like, go over to the U-Haul Center and get those moving boxes, which are durable. And then get yourself lots and lots of duct tape. To start off, you basically make a box for your legs that's just, that's just basically touching your skin, and then you can slide in and out of easily and make sure you've got room to put your foot in. And then to make it even snugger, after you get everything all done, you get like half-inch foam cushioning and then glue it in there, and then that makes it extra snug, and you could go jogging with those things on. And so I'm doing comics now, and I'm doing a uh, – well, two of my, my, my main thrusts right now are uh, – I'm just completing a uh, kind of like an elf story. is about uh, an elf growing up with humans who kind of gets mixed up in a, uh, a war. And then uh, – the the other one, which is more relevant here, is called Transformers the Litany, which is a mytho-historical uh, tale of the evolution of the Transformers. I also did a short story with the Transformers and Star Trek The Next Generation. Oh, that's awesome. And I, I turned the Enterprise D into two Autobots, uh, Star Drive and uh, Saucer, which I guess you can uh, figure out which one is which. When I was watching, two things that have really bugged me about the first movie was, one, in the theater, there was no hero shot of Optimus Prime transforming. You got a nice shoulder, undercarriage, or whatever, but you never saw a full body transformation. 
everybody else had one. Why didn't Optimus Prime have one? But it was the movie when uh, Sam's parents burst into his room and they first meet Michaela. The mother, mother goes, oh, my, you're cute. And then the MST3K fan in me said, oh, do you swing both ways? Have you ever had a mother-son threesome? Come on, I'll show you where to keep the strap on, and then I'll, then you can do my husband and the dog. This concludes the YouTube presentation of the Radio Free Cybertron interview with Joe Ibe, a.k.a. the Metal Hawk Guy. For more of the interview, check us out at tfradio.net, and while you're there, check out our weekly podcast, Radio Free Cybertron, as well as New Soundwave.